If you're flying into South Korea, you land in Incheon. But if you let Incheon only be a transit point, then you're missing out on the charms of this sprawling city on the west coast of Korea. I am Chang Mei-jun, South Korea correspondent of The Straits Times. Follow me as I show you how to maximize your time in the city center, glimpse a meaningful piece of South Korea's past, go island hopping with kids in tow, and finally, get a taste of paradise. First stop is Ge Hangjang Gori, or Open Port Street. The best way to experience this historical zone is to sign up for an electric car tour that will take you through the small alleys and up hilly slopes. Tours last 50 minutes and run every hour from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. A friendly guide will explain to you the many historical icons of the area and help you take pictures at the most photogenic spots. The vehicle is designed to look like a car from the 19th century and you can choose from a 3 or 5 seater. You can book directly at the tour operator's booth located in front of Incheon Station but it would be safer to book online in advance to guarantee an English-speaking guide. Since we're taking a ride through history, how about renting some vintage clothes to match? We make a quick stop at Kyongsong Boutique one of the many clothing rental stores in the area. My daughter loves the vintage look and had fun browsing the racks before deciding on a pink dress with a spring feel. A two-hour rental costs 25,000 won and you can pose for photos at the retro studio inside the store. First, a drive through Chinatown unmistakable with all its auspicious red buildings and gold statues. The streets here are bustling on a Sunday, filled with people looking for authentic Chinese food and snacks like mooncakes and ping tang hulu, candied fruits on a stick. We make a stop at Tonghua Maul or Fairy Tale Village. Until it waned in the 1970s, this was a vibrant area where foreign merchants lived. The government stepped in to revive the area and Fairytale Village was born in 2014. Here, your favourite Western story characters come to life in colourful paintings and murals next to castles, windmills and cafes. And even an occasional Korean folktale hero too. Next stop is Chayu Kongwon of Freedom Park. Our guide says this is South Korea's first modern park designed by a Russian architect. It sits at the top of a hill where the peak offers spectacular views of the ocean and port area. But it's very easy to be distracted by the beautiful cherry blossom trees. The cherry blossom blooms in mid-April, later than Seoul and usually around the Easter weekend. The same Russian architect also built the two-storey Jemulpo Club for foreigners to mingle freely. It's now a museum showing how life was back in the early 1900s. Fun fact! The front door was featured prominently in episode 13 of K-drama The Guardian. Located across the road is the former residence of the Incheon city mayor in the traditional Han Ok, or Korean house. It's now open to the public and offers a good vantage point to enjoy views of the city. Rounding up the tour was a ride around the park's borders where murals depict Chinese history. Feeling hungry? You cannot leave Chinatown without trying the iconic jajangmyeon. This noodle with minced meat in fried bean sauce may have originated in China, but it's the black Korean version that has risen to global fame powered by the Korean wave. And it's right here in Chinatown that jajangmyeon was created and flourished. 
caramel is added to make it sweeter, which also gives the sauce a distinct black colour. We head to Kong Hua Chun, where the first ever jajangmyeon was made by Chinese immigrants in 1905. The same recipe is still used today. You get a bowl of noodles and a bowl of sauce, packed to the brim with cubes of pork, onions, bean curd and prawns. Then you do your best to mix the two together and start slurping. We also ordered tang su yuk, or fried pork in vinegar sauce, and my daughter's favourite mandu, or dumplings. I also discover a rare white jajangmyeon sold here at the neighbouring Yongyong restaurant, served with more finely diced ingredients and white soybeans fermented over 60 days. It was apparently created 8 years ago by the restaurant's 3rd generation owners who wanted to rewrite the history of jajangmyeon. Head over to the Jajangmyeon Museum to find out how the noodle has evolved over the years, from a cheap meal for laborers to a well-loved dish in Korea. Wheat used to be expensive, so jajangmyeon was something that Koreans ate only on special occasions. And singles would eat it on Black Day on April 14 to celebrate singlehood. The first instant version was introduced in 1984 and its many incarnations have since become a staple in Korean homes. Aim for some action? Hop over to Kanghua Do, one of some 150 islands around Incheon. My daughter's best friend joins us and we head to Tian Lim Le Sports Park for zipline. I would never dare to try it myself, but the girls tell me this is the most exciting zipline they have ever tried. It's not just one, but five courses. Next up, electric go-kart. It's eco-friendly, which means there's no pungent smell of gas burning. The kids can take their time going slow, while adults go into sports mode. The girls also tried treetop walking, and we joined another family for a game of laser tag. The park is ideal for family bonding and fun, with plenty to keep everyone busy the whole afternoon. We then take a much-needed break at the hugely popular Joyang Pangji Cafe. This was the first textile factory in South Korea, abandoned and then reborn as one of the biggest theme cafes in the country. The owners have retained an industrial feel while jazzing up every corner with retro decor and upcycled items. You will see a sewing machine turned dining table and a doorknob made from an iron. Some will find it very Instagrammable. For others, it will be a walk down memory lane bringing back fond memories of a pre-online era. It's nearly sunset, perfect time to go ride the longest and most scenic luge in Asia. The Kanghua Seaside Resort has two luge tracks, both 1.8 kilometers long. The more gentle ocean course offers fantastic sea views, while the steeper valley course is for thrill-seekers. After a 5-minute gondola ride to the peak, there is an observatory tower with breathtaking views. First-time riders have to sit through a briefing on how to operate the luge. Gravity will do all the work, you just steer and pull the wheel front and back to adjust your speed. Once is definitely not enough, so we're glad we opted for three rides. Our accommodation for the trip is an attraction in itself. Just a short drive from Incheon Airport is the super glamorous Paradise City Hotel. Think of it as South Korea's version of Marina Bay Sands. This European-themed integrated resort is really a taste of paradise. It's exquisitely designed with some 2,500 paintings and art pieces waiting to be discovered. Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama's iconic giant pumpkin sculpture is the centerpiece in the lobby below a chandelier-like installation by Korean artist duo Miwoon. 
you also find a majestic winged horse sculpture by British artist Damien Hirst and a gigantic hugging sculpture by American artist Kors. Dining options are a plenty here, from Michelin star restaurants to hotel buffets and the casual dining food court. There are also many efforts to be family friendly with spaces dedicated for kids. Our room is a spacious premier deluxe twin bedder with a very posh bathroom. If you have cash to burn, you can book one of the hotel's two pool villas and get the pampered experience featured in the popular reality dating show Singles Inferno. Korean drama Vincenzo is also filmed in this posh European style living room. The highlights for us are Wonderbox and Sima both included in the room package. Wonderbox is an indoor theme park integrating media with amusement rides such as a merry-go-round, happy swing and mega mix, as well as giant slides, bumper cars and a sky trail walk up in the air. On a weekday, it's less crowded. The girls could ride anything almost immediately and they loved it. They also tried their hand at shooting cans, bursting balloons, and goofing around in front of a funny mirror. About two hours is enough for Wonderbox. It's not a big place. Sima, however, is so relaxing you will want to spend the whole day here even though the tickets are for five hours only. You will have to pay for extra time. Sima to me is South Korea's most luxurious Jimjubang, a combination of spa and sauna. It's super huge, incorporating an aqua zone for swimming and a separate dry area for sauna and different therapy rooms. I spent most of my time in the aqua zone on a cocoon swing watching the girls swim. We also braved the cold to go outdoors to swim in the heated pool. There's also an outdoor infinity pool where you can lace and watch planes take off and land all day. We then take our time in the bathhouse where we can soak in hot tubs and feel the tension in our body melt away. All freshened up, we go explore the various heat therapy rooms, each boasting different health benefits. Some rooms are simply too hot to stay too long, while others are the perfect temperature for napping. Our favourites are the Hinoki room made of cypress wood and the Wave Dream room featuring LED lights dancing to gentle music. No Jim Jubang experience is complete without drinking an ice cold shikke, a sweet Korean rice beverage, and eating roast eggs, just like how they do in the dramas. But try as she might, my daughter was unable to crack open the egg on her head the Korean way. Our last stop for Incheon is Wolmido, one of the best places here to watch the sunset. It used to be a resort island but is now joined to the mainland after sea reclamation. Wolmido somehow has a retro feel to it. Maybe it's the presence of four mini theme parks, the Uncle Ringo type. We take a long walk through a row of sea-facing restaurants and cafes to arrive at the theme park with a giant ferris wheel and we ride the Viking. To our surprise, what seems mild turned out to be such a wild ride that went on forever. Either the operator forgot about us, or he just likes to hear us scream. We also ride the 115 meter tall ferris wheel, hoping to catch a beautiful sunset. But due to cloud and fog, the sun disappeared before hitting the horizon. Dinner is a huge platter of shellfish to grill, from clams to cockles, scallops and oysters. Barbecue shellfish is famous here in Incheon. The server patiently explains how to barbecue each variety and teaches me to cut one half of the shell away so it can sit well on the grill. If we had more time, we can even go clam digging on the mud flats. But this time, we are happy to just grill clams from the restaurant. The shellfish here is so fresh and juicy, but if you don't watch the fire, you're going to end up with burnt clams like me. One more ride before home and my daredevil daughter chose the Austrian mid slingshot, similar to the G-Max in Singapore. But one shot here is just 10,000 won, almost four times cheaper than in Singapore. So the daredevil asks for a second shot and off she goes into the air.
I hope you will see Incheon as more than just an airport. There's so much in this charming coastal city just waiting for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos.